Hi, I want to talk, about, talk to you about the new centralized Nmap scanning feature in the newly released Tanium Discover 3.2. So let's go on into Discover and we'll show that. So the first thing I want to do is create a new profile. You see I have several created already, but I'm gonna make a new one. So centralized test, we'll call it. Then I'm gonna choose the profile type of centralized. And what centralized means is we're going to scan from the Tanium module server, as opposed to scanning from the Tanium clients, like in a distributed scan. This is actually a feature we added in the previous Discover release, 3.1, and it was the ability to do a centralized scan of AWS endpoints using the AWS API. So in 3.2, we've added the ability to do Nmap scans with the module server. And what this means is you can actually do Nmap scans into subnets where you have no Tanium clients deployed at all. So maybe this is a brand new installation and nothing is deployed yet, or maybe you've had Tanium for a while and you only have Discover or Tanium clients deployed in certain parts of your network. And so you have discovery of those parts, but you can't see other parts of the network where nothing is deployed yet. So with this, if you can see it from the module server, you can scan into it. So let's look at the method here. So as I mentioned, the, the previous choice was only to do Amazon Web Services, but now we have this choice here I'm gonna go with, Nmap scan with host discovery and OS fingerprinting. And if you're familiar with Discover, you know that uh, the distributed scan profiles, the options at different levels, this is equivalent to a level four scan. So it's got full host name resolution and operating system identification. All right, so the next choice is the port, since this is the same choice you had before, I'm gonna leave all these by default. The one thing we did change was we now set a default source port. So that means all the Nmap scans will come from this port 17,000 and a few ports around that. Um, Whereas before they would, by default, it would be ephemeral ports. And what this is useful for is if you wanna make sure your ne this network doesn't get flagged as malicious, you can tell your network team to, to, to whitelist connections coming from the module server and coming from this particular port range. All right, so let's tell it where to scan. So I'm gonna put in a couple of siders here. So a couple of local networks. Let's see, I'll do that one and then one more. And you can add as many networks as you want, as long as it adds up to no more than a slash 20 um, or 4,096 addresses. If you need to scan into a network that's larger than that, you'll just have to create additional profiles to do that scanning. All right, so now I can choose what networks, what particular networks not to scan, and I'm gonna leave that alone. Um, and then you choose the schedule. So the default is to run every hour, and that's fine with me, so I'm gonna leave that at default. And there's also a scan window. You can choose when these scans run during the day or during the week. But again, I'm gonna leave it as default. I want it to run all the time. So let me go ahead and create this profile. And so as soon as it's created, it's gonna actually begin a scan right now. And then after that, it'll, it'll continue to run once an hour um, after that. So you notice I've already got, had some created. So let's go ahead and take a look at interfaces and see what this data looks like. So I have a bunch of interfaces here. Let me just look for the ones that were found via centralized profiles. So here we go. Now, as you can see, the data looks very similar to the data you got distributed. I've got a bunch of MAC addresses and host names, IP addresses, operating systems, get ports, etc. But one thing that is different is if you look at, if I sort by MAC, you'll see that I have a bunch of these MACs that are unknown. And what that means is I've now, I've, I've done centralized scans to a remote network. And when that happens, you don't get a MAC address because the MAC is dropped on the router. Um, in this case, um, I also don't get OS platform. Now you can get an OS platform on a remote network, but the farther away it is from your Tanium module server, the more likely it is that Nmap is not gonna be able to resolve that host name. And I think beyond four network hops, it can't do it. So if you look at these, and in fact, you'll notice we get very little data back, but we do get the IP address at the very least, and usually you'll get ports as well. Um, so even though you don't have a lot of data, at least you know this box is out there and it may be enough to let you know this is something that we should try to get a Tanium client on. And of course, in the other cases, you had, you had plenty of information. So what's interesting about this is that you can use this information with the centralized scans along with a new Tanium client management feature to actually deploy clients. So let me show you how that works. Let's first create a label. I'm gonna label my new centralized scans. I'll just make another label called centralized, if I could spell it. So let's create, so we're gonna match any profiles that have the word centralized in them because I've created a few of them with that word in it. Centralized, great. So let me, if I go ahead and create that, you'll see it's gonna to apply to a number of my interfaces, 128 of them. And now I can go to Tanium Client Management. And I'm assuming you've already got your uh, client settings set up, some credentials. I'm gonna make, make a new deployment. And what's cool here is I can go to the targeting and I could say, target this Discover label. And it gives me the choice of labels 
right there. There's my centralized label. So what this means is I can now push out the Tandem client automatically from here without having to actually go out and touch these boxes at all. I scan them from the Tandem module server, and I can push the client from there, and now I've got Tandem client management into a network where I had nothing deployed at all before. So that's really the, the, the power of this new 3.2 centralized man, NMAP scanning feature. So I do want to go back to Discover to show you one more thing we added to 3.2 that you might be interested in. So for those customers that don't do NMAP, or at least don't do NMAP in all your, your networks, you may use ping. Um, what we've added is the ability to use ping to determine operating system. And so what we're doing is we're using the TTL values that come back from, from ping to identify OS platforms. And so you can see this is my ping scan profile. And I've got some boxes here. So this one says Linux slash Mac. I've got another other boxes that say Windows. And down here, I've got a Solaris AIX. So those are the three values you get back. And we don't get the specific operating system version, but you can tell what platform it is. And usually that's enough information to better deploy the client. And the reason why it says Linux slash Mac is because Linux and Macintosh use the same default TTL values. And same with the two, oper the two Unix operating systems, Solaris and AIX. So again, you can't necessarily determine exactly what OS it is, but this is plenty of information to better make the determination that this is something I could put a client on. Um, the flip side is if you had a printer or an IoT device, maybe like a thermostat, something like that, or maybe an iPad, it would come back with an unknown platform. And now you know, okay, I don't know for sure whether this is something I could put a client on or not. But what's great about this, this additional information, so the combination of the combined, of the uh, centralized NMAP scanning to let you get more information than you never could get before, and this enhancement to ping to get you better data in some cases, 3.2 is make Discover even more useful. And if you find this would be useful in your environment, please reach out to your TAMs. Let's go ahead and get you updated to the latest Discover release. And if you have any questions or comments, please let us know. Thank you very much and have a great day.